Outstanding. Pow. Fatenzo.com. I believe that the freedom of speech is a universal international right that all opinions shall be tolerated regardless of agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, not from it, the freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually. I believe in the separation of church and state and corporation. I believe that truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts as there are no absolute truths except the word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers that philosophize and our founding fathers debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. No individual shall be indemnified of criticism or mockery for there is honesty and jest. I pledge that the ideas I share are my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race, and I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation. With their opinions being their own, with my opinions being my own, for association does not always equal shared beliefs. I pledge to perform in a professional, dignified manner and not bully, harass, or slander my fellow human creatures, to refrain from hate, anger, sedition, vulgarity, harassment, pornography, cause Cautioning that satire and sarcasm can at times be misinterpreted as such. I believe in the counter speech doctrine that the remedy to negative, harmful speech is more positive, helpful speech, not enforced silence. That no person shall be denied access to social media, which is the marketplace of ideas at today's town square. That Section 230 privatizes communism, legalizes libel and stalking. And that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution because we're all constituents of the human party. And humans are fallible. Amen. Outstanding. Pow. One, All right, guys. Two, settle in for a uh, 212 Enzo. episode of the Fat Enzo Enzo. Show. Enzo. Today Enzo. is going to be a special Enzo. episode. Enzo. We are Enzo. talking Enzo. laps of life Enzo. with the Knights of Columbus. And that's council 8086. That's Vito over there. Vito Benedetto. He's in the council. He's awesome. He's the man. And uh, another subtitle of the show is To what degree are you willing to go to For another We're going to talk about the history of the Knights of Columbus The story behind the Labs for Life And the upcoming event on April 1st we'll talk about Michael J. McGivney The Pilgrimage Center up there in New Haven, Connecticut Of course we got the good news for you We got the Saint of the Day Which we'll talk about the Saint of the Day for August 13th That would be the blessed Michael McGivney and then we got the Latin of the day, as always. Thank you very much for settling in to the Fat Enzo Show. Remember, Fat Enzo is Latin for podcasts. Yeah, what's up, guys? So this is going to be good. Thank you so much for uh, doing this. I really appreciate it. That's key. You got to be elaborate. All right, here it comes. Good day, do followers. This is your based Catholic liturgy program. It's the Holy Ghost daily dose of digital divinity. And if you don't know, now you know the Fat Enzo Show is Latin for podcast. Today we'll cover the good news from the book and the bad news of the world. And now, your host, a former altar boy who couldn't get molested in the basement of a rectory, Robert, Robert. <laughs> Vincent oh Pitcherill. Hello. Oh yeah, here I am, and uh, I'm, I'm at my uh, my local church, and I'm talking to my uh, local crew over here of the Knights of Columbus, the 8086. Yep. Is that Council 8086? Council 8086. Yeah. Council 8086. That's that's Vito over there speaking. We got Roger. Roger, we'll just call we'll just call you Roger. <laughs> yep. Great night. night. You're you're the Grand Knight. Yes. Everybody's good with being uh, transparent in your names and everything like that. Despite uh, you know anybody on this show that might have an affiliation with uh, you know something else. Something else. Okay, that's good. So uh, you're you are what is your title? I'm the Grand Knight of Council Eighty Eighty Six. Nice. So that's like the head. Yes, I'm the leader. You're the leader, right? And you and and to your left, 
My name is Tim Mel. <laughs> <laughs> and Tim, what's your uh, rank? I am the service program director for Council 8086 and gone through the ranks. Been a past grand night, uh, several different positions in the council. Nice. And so today we're going to do like a standard Fat Enzo show, okay. basically. But usually what we do is we talk about the daily stuff every every day. What's what's the what what are the readings for that day and and, and stuff, but. Now we're going to gear it towards the Knights of Columbus, and specifically, we're going to gear it towards Laps for Life, okay? Because Laps for Life is coming up, Yep. and uh, I want to talk a little bit about that. First, let's talk about like the history of Knights of Columbus and the 8086, and then we'll get into the Laps for Life first, okay? I got some uh, questions here. Uh, da, da, da. So... Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. So... What inspired you to be a member of the Knights of Columbus and how is that how has being a member impacted your life? That's a little good one to start off. A little Yeah, that's a great question to start. Softball question. What impacted me to be a knight? Tim. <laughs> what was it? It was Tim. It was? It was Tim. I attend my wife and I attend a four o'clock mass at Our Lady of Hope. And I was uh coming out of mass one night and Tim walked up to me and he says to me, Hey, how are you at softball? And I was like, uh, suck, bad, why? <sighs> he's like, we'll talk. It's okay. So time went on and once more, twice more. And then I went through a little bit of a health issue where I had to take a back step. And then Tim came up to me with what you signed up with as a Form 100. And he says to me, come into the, into the, into the parish store right here and fill this out. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so my wife says, what are you filling out? I said, I, th I think I'm becoming a knight. Could be wrong, but I think I am. And I filled it all out, and Tim looked at it. He said, great, I'll be in touch, and you'll come to the first-degree meeting. And I kind of left like, what, a first-degree meeting? What, is, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. Then I came to the first-degree meeting. I actually had to skip uh, one for the ongoing health issue, which, thank God, has been resolved. Um, but then I came to that first degree, and the way we used to do it was the degrees were separate, first, second, and third. Now it's compiled into one where you're automatically a third degree, which you attended. So I came to the first degree, which is actually in this room, and it was beyond impactful. The lights go down, the music is playing, the, the degree team is exceptional. Um, it's informative, it's fulfilling, it's a little scary, some of the things that go on, because what you have to understand is, and what they, what they impact with is the first degree is charity, but what they remind you of is that, you know, live your life because death is coming and you just don't know, you don't know when it is. You know, none of us get out of here alive, we all know that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's very rewarding, and then I did my second and third, and then eventually the fourth, um, what impact has the Knights had on me? Um, immeasurable. I've met some amazing gentlemen. Um, I think the biggest impact for me as becoming a Knight is it brought me closer to the parish. I'm an usher in the church as well. And doing all the charity work. Charity is, you can't put a measure on it. It's just, it's incredible. What made you like religious? My wife. Yeah, uh, my wife Gina. Yes, uh, she brought me back to the church. Unbeknowing to her, she brought me back to the church. She'll say she didn't, but she did. Uh, my wife and I dated back in 1984, and then life took over for the both of us, and we went our separate ways. Oh, you're one of those stories. Oh, I am one of those stories. Yes, that's cool when that happens. Yeah. So uh, went through some bad times. I think you appreciate each other more. I absolutely do. She is everything to me. Um, was messing around on Facebook one night, uh, saw her page come up. There's a friend you might know. We started chatting back and forth, and I commented. I said, wow, I said, you look amazing, and your, your daughters are gorgeous. And she said, they're not my daughters, they're my nieces. I was like, oh, boy, I messed that one up already. And she goes, and my life is not doing so good right now. I said, well, let's get together. Let's have a cup of coffee. And we got together, and uh, at the end of that cup of coffee, I'd, I really didn't want to say goodnight, but I had to get up for work the next morning, so... We had to do that. <laughs> I called her the next day, and I said, when can I see you again? We got together over the weekend, went out to West Hampton, um, had a beautiful day, and it just 
it went progressed from there. And we were dating, and, and she was going to uh, St. John's Church in, in uh, Santa Mauritius on Long Island. And I called her up. I said to her, when do, what mass do you go to? She says, I normally go to the 7 a.m. mass. I said, can you wait for me because I'd like to go to mass with you. Can we go to the next mass? And I went to mass with her, and I was sitting there with her, and just it, there was no turning back. It just clicked? It, everything fell into place. Everything that I thought I had, that I thought I wanted, that I thought made me the person, I, I was wrong until that moment. And it's her. I have to thank her for everything. For this moment, I have to thank her. Because without her, I wouldn't be sitting here. Guys, do you have a moment like that? Where you, I was a cradle Catholic. Let me just, I'll share for a sec. I was a cradle Catholic and I went to Catholic school my whole life. I didn't want to go. My parents sent me <laughs> and I had to wear the, I didn't want to go at all. I really, I didn't, I'd want to go to public school and stuff, you know? And so I would, it caused problems because did to, just to get in trouble, get kicked out or something like that, whatever. So anyway, then went through life. Right. And then I experienced a bunch of losses and then found myself going to church and I was like, I don't know, there's something comforting about it that I grew up with or something. But then it gave me a, a certain peace that I really didn't know I had. Even though th these people that, that uh, I lost didn't even have faith. Even though we we're Catholics, we didn't even, they were like secular Catholics, you know, oh, like yeah. ca Catholic in name only Chino. Yep. Right. And, but something about going back and then re discovering Catholicism I, I love it. Well, no doubt. I mean, Roger had brought that up earlier that, you know, mm -hmm. in, in your younger years, I don't think you really understand what the church gives you. And, you know, when you're 20 years old, you're infallible. You're never going to die. Nothing's ever going to break. Mm -hmm. And you don't, I don't think you, it's a, maybe it's a bad way to put it, but I don't, I don't think that you feel you need the church. And I'm getting older. You're on autopilot. You know, getting, right. That's what I felt right. like. I was on autopilot. Right. Getting older. And then once you... Once you sit there and you listen, and if you're fortunate enough, um, which I was, to have a, a, a priest up on the altar that you just connect with, and this priest was a young priest and he was very energetic and you just connected with him. And you, you know, when mass was over, you didn't want it to be over. You wanted to go back. And, it, and fortunate enough here as well at Our Lady of Hope that yep. the, the pastor here is just amazing. And I was an altar boy. I never got touched. You know, I, I, I had good, I had good priests. So I was looking, I always had good fond memories. I, all my friends still, like I'm still friends with all my friends. That's cool. From school. Yeah, man. We had a smaller classes. It's a lot of benefits. Anyway, did you guys ever have like a come to Jesus moment? Well, I, I was born Baptist. Okay. Oh, this is going to be good. And, and it, you know, it, it, it was good. And I still feel it was very good way I was brought up. You know, we aren't. Ooh, interesting. We, we get baptized when we're ready. When, when we see the Lord, when we feel really, and I think I was eight years old and I just came to the altar and said, I want to be baptized. And the next class was like a month later. And that's what happened to me. But as I went from one Baptist church to another Baptist church, we read the Bible out. We really understood a lot of the Bible. Well, when I met my wife, uh, she was Catholic and my family said, uh, that's not going to be okay. Cause I Still love this woman. I and I, I said there's still something missing. And she took me to the you know the mass. I says, something's different here. Something's absolutely different here because we don't do the all the consecration and all that. We just, you know, maybe once a month on a Sunday night, we do the the bread and the wine. And I've read about, you know, everything that's in the Bible, I read about, and the Baptists didn't practice at all. But when I got into the Catholic Church, as soon as I met Lisa, that's that's all it went took. I went over there. I said, "I'll gladly change because I can see you do more about the you do more of what the book says than the Baptists do." Okay, now so far two people were converted because of their wives. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it, I mean, it, it, yeah, it, it was it was oh, no because, doubt. I mean, I, I believe in Catholic faith completely. I really do, and she'll tell you I'm more Catholic than she is, but I don't believe that. But uh, her parents, especially her dad, he was a hero to me in the church. He religiously went every week. He didn't always go daily because he had an early morning uh, security guard system. 
which uh, I looked up to him all the time because he taught me more about the Catholic Church than she did. And that, that's not, nothing wrong with that. But uh, we were fortunate to be married at St. Pius X up in Flint, Michigan by a... That's traditional. Yeah, but it was by a priest that wasn't the head pastor. The head pastor gave us a time and date, and he decided to take it away from us. So the secondary priest, he says, wait a minute, I'll take you. I'll keep, let's do that same day. We'll just get a different time. Well, not notes to me at the time and anybody else, but he was one of the priests you didn't want to hear about, the, the pastor himself. But the one that married me ended up turning to be a, he's a bishop now. In, wow. Uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. In fact, we're getting ready to do our 40th, and we're going to go see him to get our, renew our vows. Awesome. But uh, I, I got to say, when I changed Catholic, I just, well, this is what I was reading, but this is not what we were practicing. Yeah, because Baptists, they don't really uh, see the same veneration that we have for Mary and right. stuff like that. They don't, they think, oh, those are saints and that's Mary. Because we don't pray to them. We ask them to pray for us. Right. To step in and help us. Yes. We don't understand that part at all. But not, I'm not trying to blast the Baptists because they, they have their good things. They read the Bible all the time. And what about the meditation aspect of it? A lot of times in other denominations of Christianity, they'll be like, you have one of those things where you like kneel. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, they, they don't do that. Like, really? That's weird. I think that that's weird that you don't. Yeah, I agree. How do you not like meditate? That's all part of praying. Yeah, you're right. That, you just don't. You don't. It's all, uh, it's all in your mind. It's all more mind. Right. Like, like when you're sitting there and you're, you're struggling to come up with words to pray, that's in your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have words that are already written for you, that's a mantra that you're not thinking. Like I just rattled off that thing. Yeah. I wasn't thinking. It's just there. It's just there. It that just was comes right. Amazing. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying though. It's so you were reading it. I was no. Yeah, I was saying where, where you Yeah, I was like, where are those no. words coming from? <laughs> no, I'm just. It's just wow. the same way that we know. We know the uh, our, our 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 creed or anything. Our Father Creeds and all that. It's the same way. You know, wow. you say it enough, you're not even thinking. You're just saying it. You're just rattling it off. Right. But that's part of it. With that, for me in Catholicism. That makes me like meditate mm -hmm. when you're saying that kind of stuff. So what about you? What about your moment where My you moment. always had, you always were uh, I was Catholic? A, I was a cradle Catholic, yes. Went to Catholic school up until uh, high school. Uh, then I transferred into a public school and found out there's a big difference. Uh, first time I answered a question in uh, high school, I stood up, gave my name, and uh, I, everybody started throwing stuff at me. And the teachers, you don't have to stand up here. You can sit down. Uh, we don't, you don't, you don't have to follow those rules or anything like that. So uh, went through high school, went to church when I could. Uh, I became a, uh, after high school, went to college, became a, uh, joined the Air Force, uh, again in my 20s, and uh Religion wasn't the biggest thing in my mind at that time. I had a uh, uh, had to, had to save the world at that time, so I went into the Air Force. Was a pararescue man. Uh, my whole life, I did that as a reservist. Became a Michigan State Trooper. Uh, did that uh, for 25 years. So between jumping out of airplanes and helping people and chasing bad guys. Kind, mm. kind of at the end of that uh, is when I uh, got more involved back uh, into the Catholic Church. Like you said, there's that period of time where you're, you're working on your family, it seems, and you're working on your career, and you're working on whatever your mindset was as to why you were here. And my mindset was to help people and work for my country at that point in time. So... After I got older, got more back involved with the church and with the Knights of Columbus. Yes, and I, I, I did you find that same like camaraderie, that same brotherhood that you shared in the military service and in uh, policing that you found like with the Knights? Knights yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I found that a lot, a lot of times fraternities, brotherhoods, like clubs, you'll get like more veterans will join because of that because they're kind of like missing that. Right. Yes. Same kind of thing? Absolutely the same kind of thing. 
Nice. And what about you guys? You guys any veterans? Are I you- am. I am not. Unfortunately, no. I am not a veteran. Right. <clears throat> yeah, me neither. I wish I was. You learn so much, but but so like talking about brotherhood, what got you into this? The knights. Then I'm. You know, he he was. When you were so, you just were you just start going back to church at that point more often. Uh, during my whole career, after you retired, after I retired, yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. During my career, uh, work had a lot. To- Somebody came up to you and and uh, solicited you, like you were soliciting Vito. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's it's. Uh, <laughs> You have j- people in a, have a particular job uh, in the Knights of Columbus. Okay. Can you tell me about that for a yes. sec? Yes. And, um, We've all held that rank. We'll, we'll, yes. The yeah. chancellor. The chancellor. The chancellor. The chancellor. The chancellor. Okay. <laughs> One of his main jobs is recruiting people. So, uh, and that's what I did. It. I did it for two years. Um, and everybody has their goals. So the Knights of Columbus have their goals and they want to make sure you try to keep recruiting people into the organization. So Absolutely. you give them the information. So and they have, uh, we made our numbers both years. I really enjoy it. When you start doing it, even though you're not in that position anymore, you move up from uh, chancellor to deputy grand knight to grand knight, you're still always a chancellor. You still always want to talk to people and get them interested mm. in the Knights of Columbus uh, because it's such a great organization. We do so much uh, for the community and for the uh, uh, parish and the church uh, as far as charity goes. Uh, we help a lot of individuals, and we save a lot of lives, and that's one of the things that Vito will be talking about. Oh, yeah. Coming events. So. Yes, we're going to get into the charity aspect of it, definitely, 100%. Let's do the um, readings of the day so just so you guys are aware what i usually do is i do um the daily mass but today because it's all uh has to do with father mcgivney i gotta read this right here in accordance with the guidance knights of columbus chaplains as well as priests with active councils in their parishes outside of the archdiocese of hartford may seek permission from their diocesan bishop to offer a votive mass of blessed michael mcgivney on august 13th in this way masses honoring blessed michael mcgivney may be offered for gatherings of knights around the world provided the permission of the local ordinary is obtained so a, a vote of mass is in honor of blessed Michael McGivney may also be offered on other days again with permission of the diocese and Bishop when Knights of Columbus gather for special occasions, as long as the chosen days does not conflict with the solemnity of other obligatory observance on the church's liturgical calendar. So anyway, we got a bunch of Knights gathered and we're going to do a show based on Mr. McGivney and we'll talk about him for the saint of the day in a second, but let's, let's do the first reading. And uh, the first reading is, Will be Vito. Uh, you got the epistle, the Old Testament. Ready? Go ahead. It's a reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters. I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit. As you were called to one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, of, wow. building up the body of Christ, until we, we will attain the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature to manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Now Psalm one ten. The responsorial is: You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Um, I think that's where we do the response. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. 
<clears throat> the, the scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. All right, and then we'll do the gospel. Go ahead, there you go. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the queen, or blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are prosecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. What do you think that these readings have to do with Blessed Michael McGivney? Let's, uh, you know what, before we get into that, before we do that little homily part, let me talk about uh, McGivney right now, okay? Our saint of the day, brought to us by Franciscan Media. Blessed Michael McGivney, the eldest son of an immigrant Irish family in Connecticut, young Michael left school at 13 to work in a brass factory making spoons. At 16, he began studies for the priesthood in Quebec, but was obliged to leave to help support the family when his father died. Michael completed his education in Baltimore, Maryland, and was ordained for the Diocese of Hartford in 1877. Assigned to St. Mary's Parish in New Haven, Father McGivney was very active in parish and civic affairs, serving as director of public plays and fairs. He volunteered to become the guardian of Alfred Downs, a minor whose father had died, leaving a large family in poverty. Oh, so he was like a real father, actually. Adopted father, kind of. Interesting. The situation, as well as his own family circumstances and that of other immigrants, impressed on Father McGivney the need for lay Catholic men to establish a mutual aid society to provide financial assistance for their families if the primary wage earner died. Protestant fraternal groups already provided this type of life insurance protection for their members. In 1882, Father McGivney formed the Knights of Columbus among a small group of St. Mary's parishioners to promote charity, unity, and fraternity, assisting widows and orphans. Because of the Knights' emphasis on serving church, community, and family, the organization grew and did not remain strictly parish-based. Patriotism was added as a founding principle in 1900. Father McGivney died from pneumonia in 1890. He was buried in Thompson Town, Connecticut. Later, his body was moved back to St. Mary's in New Haven, where it remains to this day. He was beatified in 2020. And uh, just a reflection on his life, Michael Joseph McGivney was a genuine pastor who, in the words of Pope Francis, was unafraid to share the smell of his sheep. He promoted families whose members were strong in their faith, expressed through generous following of the corporal and spiritual works of mercy. In a decree read at the beatification mass, Pope Francis praised Father McGivney's zeal and the proclamation of the gospel and generous concern for his brothers and sisters. These made him an outstanding witness of Christian solidarity and fraternal assistance. So there's that. So now we know who this guy is, and he started this this group, yeah. <clears throat> and all of us joined. We did. <laughs> we and sure it's did. pretty much like... 
all charity. It's all like, I mean, they said that there's a little bit of a patriot patriotism aspect. Well, that's, that's the fourth degree, which as you, that's read, the fourth yeah, degree, that's the fourth degree, which as you read, talk to me about on. the degrees, the degrees. First degree is charity. And that is, uh, that is the, I believe the paramount of this organization is charity. Um, everything that we do, we do for the sake of parish community neighborhoods, uh, the underprivileged, uh, the impoverished, we do it for everybody. No one is left out. You do not have to be a Catholic uh, to be... What? You do not have to be a Catholic to ex- receive our... Shut Catholic. up. You don't. You don't have to be a Catholic to be a Knight of Columbus? No, to be a Knight of Columbus, oh. you have to be Catholic. Okay. To receive our charity... Oh, okay, 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 got it. Sorry, my bad. Our okay. charity has no boundaries. It okay. has no limits. Okay. Everyone is entitled to our charity. Then second degree is unity. Unity is what you were doing right now. The unified brothers together as one, as a group. As a group, larger group, we can do more. Fraternity says, I will stand by you shoulder to shoulder, through thick and thin, through right and wrong, through less and more. I will stand next to you, and I will help you, and I would hope that my brothers would do the same. Fourth degree is patriotism, and that basically is country. It's the veterans. Fourth degree is more based towards veterans. Our fourth degree does a lot for the local um, halls of veterans. We do, uh, we're actually doing two cookouts this year for them. We normally do one, we're doing two. Um, We did a program in conjunction with Gary Sinise where we gave back um, the star program. And what they did was they took stars from retired flags with a prayer in them and we handed them out. And so everything is done on donation and that, enabled the fourth degree, which is an assembly, which is a, a, a group of councils <clears throat> together. And we gave back to, to the veterans. So again, it's patriotism, but it's, its basis is charity. Give back. Right. And that's what we do. That's, that's what we do. It's awesome. What is um, the most outrageous thing you've ever done in the name of Catholicism? outrageous yeah would you ever say anything like yeah totally like what am i doing i'm doing this for like there's there you can go on uh on walks for miles right yeah oh you can pilgrimage or something like that Mm -hmm. you could do yeah there's Um, a lot of stuff like what was what's the craziest thing you've ever done i wouldn't say catholicism i wouldn't say craziest i would or outrageous i would say most rewarding would you say it's joining the knights of columbus and doing (laughs) well if you Let's let's turn back the clock uh, 15 years ago, before my wife and I got together. Um, if anyone said to me, you're going to be doing a podcast as a member of the Knights of Columbus, I would have said, you're crazy. It's not happening. No way. Um, mm-hmm. So it's not, back then, crazy, the thought of it. Now, rewarding. Do you got any friends that are like, what are you doing? You, that you're so into yeah, being Catholic. Even my whole family wonders what's what I'm doing all the time. Like <laughs> Why are you busy? Why can't you do anything? He goes, well, I'm the Grand Knight. I try to help everybody out. I try to organize charities. I try to organize my, my officers who do a very good job. I am very pleased with the officers I have. They're unbelievable. Leading isn't hard with these guys. They just they know what they're supposed to do and they do it. How long have you been in the organization? I've been in it since 2012. I was brought in through a church uh, team, and church stands for uh, Christ who knows His Parish. And that was up in Michigan. I had three brothers and a deacon that were with me. We decided let's go join the Knights. We you know we knew about them because up there most of them were skilled tradesmen because they worked in all the factories and all that. So they took care of the church. They do all the cooking. They do everything for the church. Yeah. They wanted to be part of that. And they were the thing they were starting to do was they wanted to put an eternal flag up for the unborn. And I mean flame, not a flag, flame. And it sounds crazy, especially up there as cold as it is and windy as it is. How do you do that? Well, we designed it, and it's not stopped since 2013. It's never gone out. One thing I got to say is just uh, coming and, and uh, you know, happening upon this church and seeing the community and the way that, it, like, for instance, the Sunday breakfast is all is always provided and everything. And like you, what you guys are doing yesterday, you're doing a fish fry. Fish fry, yes. And, uh, like, it's it's just so much community in this particular church, right? Absolutely. 
I love it. It's, it's not just for us. It's not just for the church. And it's all the Knights of Columbus. Everybody gets involved. And when I'm, when I'm traveling, I was traveling in Tennessee a couple months ago. I went to a mass out there and they're like, all right, well, we're, we don't have our usual today. And Knights of Columbus don't have, they didn't provide or to, I guess everybody's like, what? That's, we, we always have it. Like the Knights of Columbus are always in the communities mm-hmm. providing stuff like that, which is awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Tell me about this lapse for life. Let's do that. Can you tell us the history and mission of uh, the Knights of Columbus and how it relates to the Lapse of Life 5K fundraiser? Sure. Wasn't it here? Because I did a Google search. I was looking and uh, when, when you Google Lapse for Life, it comes up. Florida comes up a lot. I was trying to find the other organizations and there's a couple. There's one in Australia or something. Yeah. There's, there's some throughout a little bit, but it seems like it started in Florida. I don't know. Was it started I, by this council? No, it no, was no. not started Central by this council. Coastal was, right? Oh, the yeah. coastal, coastal Laps for Life yes. was? Yes, Coastal Laps for Life was started by this council. Uh, the reason why Florida comes up is because we do lead, um, and not, there's no bragging rights here, and there's no hooray for us, um, but Florida does lead in the amount of ultrasound machines uh, donated to women's facilities. So that's right. why on Florida the, comes on up. On the screen, you can't see it, Vito, but I got the Coastal Laps for Life Um CoastalLapsForLife.org, basically up here, mm. um, and and this is this is the upcoming 5K. Yep, that you can register for, which is sponsored by the Knights of Columbus Council 8086 of Our Lady of Hope Catholic Church, and this is going to go down April first, yep, 7:30 a.m. There's a 5K walk, uh, 8 9 15 a.m. There's an opening ceremony, and then 9:30 to 12 there's a walkathon. All right, and then can I read the goal? Sure. Go ahead. It says that our goal is to raise at least fifteen thousand dollars to this event. Why fifteen thousand dollars? Because with fifteen thousand dollars, we can purchase a new ultrasound machine to put in a pregnancy crisis center. Our mission is to put ultrasound machines in as many places as we can. We can because research shows that when a mother sees her child in an ultrasound, she is sixty to seventy percent more likely to keep that child. We know from past history that these ultrasound machines have saved several young innocent lives. Now you have to also remember, yes, this is just one of our fundraising uh, initiatives. Events yes, that, that we do for the ultrasound machine. Oh, really? They. Uh, we have to raise fifteen thousand, and then Supreme. Somebody's gonna match it. Supreme matches it. So ultrasound machines usually go around thirty thousand. Oh wow! So, but it will have a huge impact. Right. This is an intelligent thing. Yes, it's it's very calculated, and right. And then this is also where it gets into the like you know. I, I know that the Knights of Columbus is not uh, political. It's all about charity. Correct. And it doesn't matter what your political persuasion, right? Everybody nope. connect is connected. Correct. That we're all Catholics. Yep. And we're all doing charity for other people. Exactly. But you can't help but get in into politics when you talk about pro-life, pro-choice. I mean, there's a lot of the people you'll you'll probably engage with people who are very political when you are out doing your thing, doing your walk or whatever it is, right? Can you tell me about that? Well, we get pushback. We, well, when we do our walk out front of the church once a year, we have people that honk their horns driving by, and they salute you in different ways. Which are the easiest ways to say? It. Some people like what we're doing. Some people don't. But and that's their choice. But we are going to stand out there and say, "This is what we believe in. This is our mantra. You can't take this away from us. We believe in every child should have a voice, whether they're one week old." Or 90 years old every person should have that choice and yes that choice. And they, it, i guess that does give them the voice it's like hi this is me i'm right here that's like, right do you really want to do that yep. well, that that's that's the whole concept the whole concept is to bring awareness and 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 our voices today without our voices today without these projects those voices don't get heard they don't get a chance um so going back to the, the Laps for Life issue mm-hmm. um, and, and topic, yes, uh, we've been doing Laps for Life here since 2016. Um, that was the first year that we did it here, and it was started by a gentleman um, who unfortunately has passed recently, Jim Wagner. I got his uh, picture on the screen, yeah. Jim, Jim Wagner. Wagner. What a wonderful man. Wonderful, wonderful man. 
Can I read um, the bio here? You can absolutely do that. In 2016, sure. Jim started the initial steps in creating this wonderful event called Coastal Labs for Life. When speaking with single mothers and local women's centers here in Volusia County, Jim recognized that there was a need to provide ways that would help raise money for these centers to help single mothers. The use of ultrasound machines is the number one method to help show a mother the love someone can have for their own child. These machines are expensive and most of these locations are un- underfunded and unable to purchase a machine as well as provide materials. So, And then working with local high schools and different Knights of Columbus councils, the Labs for Life is that way to provide both funds and awareness for this need. Jim has passed away recently and he will be deeply missed. He left us with a legacy of love and, pas- and passion for doing great things. Jim started something beautiful and now we will continue do- doing his good works in being the voice for the unborn and providing assistance to all that walk through the doors of a woman's center alone and scared. And then the person who took up the, the reins of this is you, V. <laughs> <laughs> Vito yes. Benedetto, Council 8086's life director at Our Lady of Hope. Vito has taken on the challenge of taking over the reins of this great event. And Vito has put together many other events throughout the year to help raise awareness of babies' rights as well as being a voice after hearing that, I guess that's what you're, you're alluding to, right? That there's other events after hearing single mothers that had gone through uh, to full term and what it meant for them only helps to motivate Vito. We know that he will help bring awareness and carry on the legacy of Jim Wagner. So, so Jim Wagner may he rest in peace. He recently passed away. He did. He recently passed away. Um, he became ill um, uh, some years ago, um, went through a double, Lung transplant. I didn't even know you could have a transplant for your lungs. Double lung transplant, and and it it came wow. it literally. The miracle man. He is the miracle man. Literally, the lungs became available literally at the last minute. He was on one hundred percent oxygen. There was no way he was breathing on his own, and uh, he was given the gift of life. And he went through that surgery, and he came back very very strong. Unfortunately, um, his health did falter recently and he succumbed to his illness um and he is deeply missed um and i've said it before i'll say it again um i never alluded to it um but he was a mentor to me he was a huge part uh, of of my joy in being a knight um very passionate man horrible joke teller (laughs) but passionate man um jim would start a joke (laughs) And immediately start laughing. And the three-minute joke took 30 minutes. And at the end of the joke, you didn't know what the joke was. <laughs> but you had to laugh because Jim was still laughing. <laughs> so, so it's all about performance with him. Jim, <laughs> Jim's, Jim had a laugh that was infectious. You couldn't, you couldn't, you, you couldn't keep a straight face. Uh, the, 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 the jokes were, were illegible, but the laughter was contagious and it was wonderful what jim taught me was do everything to your fullest do it if you're going to take on the role and you're going to take on the reins don't do it you know don't even settle for 99 percent. you know start slowing down when you hit about 110 percent. start slowing down a little bit take a breath and get back into it and uh up to and including the last event um jim was right there right next to me shoulder to shoulder Unity and fraternity, shoulder to shoulder. Um, we will have the color guard again there at the at the opening ceremonies of this event, and Jim was part of the color guard. Um, that's the fourth degree. That's the fourth degree. Yes, correct. And uh, spent the whole day there and gave it his all. I mean, literally gave it his all. Did all the legwork, the paperwork, and the paperwork is just it's second to none the amount of paperwork that goes into this, and he did every bit of it. Um, he just made it a wonderful event. And I think the goal here this year is to take it to another level um, in, in honor of Jim and, and just say, Jim, all your work and everything that you did for us will not be forgotten. It will never be forgotten. And we're going to build on it. And, and your name will always, when, when, when Laps for Life is mentioned, Jim's name will always be mentioned. When the, when the Brotherhood of 8086 is mentioned, Jim's name will always be mentioned. When a bad joke comes about, Jim's name will be mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and I can only say, I, 
the, the, his memory is always endeared and, and much love to him. Much love to him. Let me do the Latin word of the day here. Latin word of the daytime. Oh, where's my intro? Where is it? It's right here. Oh, here it is. And Enzo.com. It's time for the Latin word of the day. Woo! The well, Latin word of the day is, this is going to be a good one, guys. You're going to see how it pertains. Car- caritas. Caritas. C-A-R-I-T-A-S. Is it char- Charitas? No. I don't know. I don't know. Like, fully Charitas. I think that's how it is. Right? Okay. The C-H. I don't know if you you know this. Like like the Italian language. The C is the cha yeah. in Latin. Charitas. What does that mean? Charitas? Something. Charity. <laughs> Charity. Uh, Charity. So the root. Yeah, I know. Right. Like I was always thinking like carnitas, like <laughs> that's, this was, I immediately, yes. It immediately makes me hungry too. I want Mexican food. I love Mexican food. Anyway, charity. So charity, char- charitas is the root word for charity. Charity comes from the Latin noun charitas, which is derived from the adjective charus, meaning deer. It originally meant Christian love of your fellow human beings and only started to be applied to organizations that help others in the late 18th century. Christian love in its highest manifestation, charity, mercy, compassion, alms, charitable foundation from Latin charitatem, uh, costliness, esteem, affection from charus, dear or valued in the Vulgate. The Latin word often is used as translation of Greek agape, love. You guys know that. There's three words mm-hmm. for love in Greek, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the phila is like Philadelphia, brotherly love, right? Agape is a different kind of love. So that they were using that as a synonym when they transferred over the Bible to Latin. They were using this word char- charitas mm-hmm. or their agape. I thought that was interesting. So especially Christian love of fill a man, perhaps to avoid the sexual suggestion of Latin amor. So you see how that applies to what we're talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about charity. It, it, that's, what it's about. that's what it's about. That's why we're here. It's for charity. And, and the lapse for life is that is, is charity. Why is it like you guys have, have, you guys have good lives. I feel like the Knights of Columbus is men who are late, lay, lay, lay people who have good families, who are good leaders in their families, who are good leaders in all kinds of vets, right? Like all mm-hmm. these different organizations where they take it to this organization and then they give back to people that are less fortunate. Oh, no doubt. Like you're already blessed. I think so. Is that, do you, you find that a lot of guys are like, I'm, I feel blessed. That's why I'm in this. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's f- more from like a positive. Mm hmm. Not like, oh, woe is me. No, no, I don't think. I, I just, I need somebody. I'm alone. No, I don't think any. I don't. I haven't. I haven't personally witnessed that card being played. The woe is me card. Um, I am on the side of what you your original statement. I think. I think why we do what we do is because we are blessed. Because we're fortunate enough to have the means that we have. Right. You know, and and when you when you get asked, why do you do it? Why do you do it? Because I can. Because I can, and because I can, I will, and that's that's the blessing, right? I was I was given the opportunity to do this. And do you feel it come? I know people don't do it just because they want the the karma to come back at them, and then have you know a good life. Because I did good, but does that come back at you? Do you feel it like you'll get positive? Because you're giving back and being positive, do you feel you, it coming you, back into your yeah, life? Like no you're doubt. getting repaid. If you put the positive out there, the positive comes back. Yeah, I think. Yeah, no see, doubt. You see the rewards, not awards, but you see the rewards when, like, a, one of our ESE teachers that we give money to every year out of the Tootsie Roll Drive, how much she says, we could not survive without you guys. The coach for kids, we give out the kids' coach, we give them to the staff, but every once in a while you have a child there that's had one, and they'll say, oh, thank you very much. I had mine last year. And it's just a reward. Coming back to you, when we do our hurricane nights, we put up shutters for the elderly, for the people are, that don't have any way to get it done. There's so many different charities we have out there. What, what's your favorite fundraising event? or My favorite fundraising that, or, or event. Or event that we put on we put on to get people. What's the best 
Knights of Columbus event. My fundraising event <laughs> yes. is the Duck Derby, because I originated that and came up with that idea. And what is it? What is it? The Duck Derby? Yes. <laughs> Tell them some ducks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, We're going out duck hunting? <laughs> well, we used to use live ducks. We got dogs? No, no. We used to lose, use live ducks, but we could after we stamped the numbers on the bottom of them, they didn't want to have anything to do with us. <laughs> so... The live right. duck theory didn't or the, didn't pan out. Didn't what pan is out. what is going on with this? <laughs> okay. What we do is uh, at the uh, fall festival uh, with the city of Port Orange, we have a duck derby, and all throughout the year at different events, uh, we sell chances for people uh, to win if we pick their duck. Uh, Prize, which is first prize is a thousand dollars. So these are people that have farms and stuff, and they have like ducks who are. Nope. These are plastic ducks. Oh. <laughs> I told you the live. The live ducks duck didn't pan out. out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so. So whoever has the best duck. Well, whoever gets their duck picked. Picked. Okay. okay we have four prizes. First prize is a thousand, five hundred, two hundred, one hundred dollars, and though that money is supplied by our sponsors. Uh, can you say a sponsor's name? Is that sure? Okay, if you can, yeah. R Richie Cadillac's a big sponsor. Uh, Mullinex Ford is a big sponsor of ours. Hooligans Restaurant. Uh, the Marie uh, U.S. They don't care about being mentioned with the Knights of Columbus, right? No, no. no. Okay. Uh, uh, A one air conditioning or one hour air conditioning. These people. That I wonder if these sponsors do. Are they have Catholics working at those? Oh, I would have no idea. Oh, well, yes, I, I know that for a fact because one of them's a, a parishioner from our church. Nice. Who, uh, who works at um, Mullinex. Nice. Uh, Ford. So anyway, what they do is uh, then we sell the ducks, and that money we make from uh, selling those ducks, uh, we use for our different charities. We've uh, used them for uh, the ultrasound uh, program. Uh, we've used them for coats for kids uh, and buying the coats. Uh, we use them for, oh, what? help me out here. What wheelchair else? fund. Wheelchair fund. Seminarians. Seminarians, um, human trafficking. <gasps> wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's a good, it's a good, uh, fundraiser people really like it and we have uh, our nights then when on that day uh that we have it uh go out into the pond uh in in uh, the duck suit wears a duck suit uh, <laughs> <laughs> and goes out and retrieves the winning ducks it's, it's an event it's, a it's his event. personality i already know yeah i'm catching on now okay so uh, Vito's a ham he'll do whatever right <laughs> Jim, Jim, I Wang. never was. I never was. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Jim Wagner was happened. a duck one year, our, our, our hero. You nice. Know, he was out there, out there helping the kids out and doing stuff. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that is my favorite fundraiser because I have possession of that. I'm the one who put it all together and I was in charge of it. And mm -hmm. I got the idea from Alaska. I visited Alaska and they were having a duck derby. Oh. And uh Theirs was really cool because they came in with a helicopter and dropped all these ducks over the pond that uh, that they were uh, doing it at. Wow. That was brought a lot of attention to it by having a helicopter there. We tried that here with yeah. the city. City of Port Orange, it's that. Nah, 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 <laughs> we can't take that chance. <laughs> wow, the duck great. goes rogue. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. What about um, – with all this traveling, have any of you guys been up to New Haven and seeing the uh, Michael McGivney Pilgrimage Center? We had one night go up there last year. For the headquarters? Yeah. He took pictures and brought them back. Even the old cemetery, the old stone he had before he was moving, he's got the picture of that, too. Did you see that video I sent you? That video is crazy. Where, Good, they, dude. where they have their... Uh, I have I made a I made a little video here. I mean, let me play this really quick. I know you guys probably can't see. I'll show you guys after. But... Uh, this little video showing at Enzo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the blessed Michael McGivney Pilgrimage Center, the latest manifestation of the Knights of Columbus dedication to their founder, Father Michael McGivney. 
If you're looking for a unique experience that celebrates the life and legacy of a Catholic priest who fought for those in need and provided for Catholic families in financial hardship, then look no further. We're about to take a wild ride into the depths of the Knight's history. Father McGivney was a visionary who founded the Knights of Columbus in 1882 in New Haven, Connecticut. He dedicated his life to helping those in need and providing for Catholic families who faced financial hardship. Today, the Knights of Columbus are one of the largest Catholic fraternal organizations in the world, with over 2 million members worldwide. That's no small feat, folks. The Blessed Michael McGivney Pilgrimage Center is a state-of-the-art facility dedicated to celebrating the life and legacy of Father McGivney. Located at the Knights of Columbus headquarters in New Haven, Connecticut, it offers an immersive experience for visitors to learn about Father McGivney and his vision for the Knights. This ain't your ordinary museum, folks. The center features interactive exhibits, displays, and artifacts that tell the story of Father McGivney's life and the founding of the Knights of Columbus. You can see items from Father McGivney's personal collection, including his chalice and prayer book, and learn about the history and mission of the Knights. The centerpiece of the Pilgrimage Center is the beautiful Blessed Sacrament Chapel, which features a stunning mosaic of Father McGivney and his vision for the Knights. You can attend Mass or spend time in quiet prayer and reflection. It's a transcendental experience, man. But that's not all, folks. The Pilgrimage Center hosts a variety of events and programs throughout the year, including lectures, concerts, and special exhibits. You can also take part in guided tours or explore the center on your own. It's like a Disneyland for Catholics. Thanks for joining us on this wild ride through the Blessed Michael McGivney Pilgrimage Center. If you're looking for a mind-blowing experience that celebrates the legacy of Father McGivney and the Knights of Columbus, then this is the place to be. For more information, check out their website or plan your visit today. It's time to take a journey into the unknown, my friends. Outstanding! Yeah, so, um, very... Listen, you guys belong to an organization that has a museum. That's pretty cool. So what prompted you to go there? That's where I'm from. I'm from Bridgeport area. Okay. And so I'm like, wow, this is like from, tw this is only 20 minutes away from me right here. So yeah, I called him up. I like, I'm a, I'm a knight and I'm up here in Florida from Florida. And, uh, do you guys have a museum or anything like that? I called the headquarters. Yeah. Like, is that, I don't know. This is a stupid question. Do you guys have like a museum or something for the Knights of Columbus? Yeah, we have the right across the street. We have the pilgrimage center. It's open from noon till four, I think, Wednesday to Sunday. And I went over there. It's very, very cool, in depth, you know. And uh, they had a little chapel in there. Uh, they have all his his uh, original clothes, stuff he was buried with. Even they have some like relics there, things that he used. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? We actually have some of um, the Father McGivney cards, and some of them actually have the small pieces of relic in the card. Okay. And uh, we've actually given um, to some of our brothers that were in the hospital a relic in, in a case to keep with them while they're in the hospital. And uh, does it work? It does work. It does work. It absolutely works. It absolutely does work. Be between that and prayer, very powerful. Absolutely, the, the 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 power of prayer is, is is you can't you can't measure it, and along with that relic, insane. I believe that too. Yeah, there's so much power in prayer. I think we covered the nights pretty well, right? And everything. Tell me about this lapse for life again. What are we trying to do here? Let's a call to action. Yeah, call to action. April first. Yes. Um, beginning at seven thirty, we have the five k run. It's the second annual run. Um, Where's it at? It, it's funny you should ask. It's at Father Lopez High School. Okay. On LPGA in Daytona Beach. <clears throat> Starts at 7.30 with a 5K run. At 9.15, we're going to have opening ceremonies. Our pastor, Father Matt, will be there uh, to give the opening prayer. We have a couple of guest speakers um, from different women's centers um, that we've donated ultrasound machines to in the past. We will have one of the... Uh, 
uh, mobile units that we donated actually last year mm -hmm. uh, will be there. That that house will be in attendance. And uh, it's encouraged to go into the unit, check it out, see what it's all about. Um, so our goal this year is to place our 12th and hopefully 13th ultrasound machine. That's our goal. You've already done that many? We've done 11. We've placed 11 machines. Um, and you've always had uh, one of the sponsors um, matching? No. No, Supreme, Supreme matches. matches. Supreme matches. Okay. Uh, um, Oh, is that why you use the word sponsor? Is Supreme the name Supreme, of the brand? Su no, Supreme is the Supreme Knights. It's 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 the hierarchy of the Knights of Columbus. Supreme matches it. We go from state to Supreme. Oh, this is the the Supreme jargon. Matches. This is the inside yeah. jargon. I'm not aware jargon. of. You're okay, getting, okay, you're okay. All now. okay. So you go. So you're so our federal, like we're on a state state local level right now. We are. At a the state federal level. comes in and will match it. Correct. Correct. Wow. Yeah. So um, what we're looking to do, like I said, is place our 12th and hopefully 13th machine this year. And what we're looking to do is, is have this event last longer rather than someone, you know, a handful of people come down and walk and then leave. We want this event to be a little more grandiose. Stay around for a little while. Um, introduce yourself to people that you don't know, that you haven't met before. Talk, chat. Why are you here? We're here for this. Let's. We're all there for a common goal, and the and the goal is to be the voice of the unborn that don't have a voice yet, and that without us, they might not never have a voice. Right. Um, so that's the goal. The goal is to come out, be aware of life, and and know that uh, every life is important, from the date of conception to natural death. That's what it's all about. Um, don't take a life away. Oh, yeah. And these women um, are very, very scared. And they're from all different, all different things, you know, um, single by themselves, uh, in a relationship that isn't uh, working, in a strong relationship, but... Uh, they don't feel afford, it's time. Or afford, well, not even that they don't feel it's time. The, I think um, the, the biggest thing is, is, is the worry. How am I going to do this? How am I going to support this baby? Um, I was fortunate enough one time, um, well, I've been to many banquets, um, but at this one moment, uh, the, uh, the what young lady came and spoke and, uh, she said it, she said it very clearly. Um, I was addicted to drugs. Um, I was very scared. I couldn't even take care of myself. How am I going to take care of this baby? I'm going to bring a baby into this world. I can't do it. I can't do it. And she went to the resource center and, and it was one of the centers that we actually donated to. And she saw the ultrasound and she asked the woman, she said, that's my baby's heartbeat. And the woman said, yes, that is your baby's heartbeat. And she said, I can't do this. I can't give this baby up. And she put herself through it and got clean and got an apartment, got a job, became viable. The and center helped her out with those. Yeah. You know. the, center just, the center just doesn't encourage these women to have the baby. The center stands by these women after the baby is born, um, help them get a job, uh, help them get an apartment, help them get interactive in the neighborhood and, and become a viable person with a beautiful baby. And I've asked this question numerous times, and I'll, I'll ask you, what's the greatest sound in the world? The greatest sound in the world. Is it a baby's cry? Oh, well, yeah, it is. It's a baby's laughter. It's a baby's, baby's laughter. Yes. That's the greatest sound in the world. When we're sitting in church and you hear these babies, whether they're kicking, moaning, crying, laughing, and some of the parishioners are looking over like a little, that's your future. That's the future of your parish right there. What about, uh, oh man, like what you guys are doing? That that seems like a lot of FBI agents should be coming down on you. Have you heard, have you heard about that recently in the news or whatever? Well, we don't. Again, we you know that's that's not something that we concern ourselves with, and it's not something that we um, discuss. As as far as that goes, we're kind of focused on on the good of everything, right? You know, not that we're oblivious to the yes. world, yes. because you have to be conscientious. You have to be conscious of what's going on, um, but it's not a directive that we've ever even thought about. It's just, you know, we're in it for charity, unity, fraternity, the Catholic faith, the women that need us, the families that need us, the communities that need us. So we don't delve into that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's out there. Have you guys been to a Latin mass at all or anything? Um, I have never. No? Because I would sit there oblivious as to what's being said. I could only uh, watch the actions 
Yeah. And, and, and gain, you know, the, from the actions and from the, it's beautiful reflection of what's going on yeah. where I would get it from. Mm-hmm. All right. There's other events that yes, Vito's uh, spearheading that also makes uh, funds and raises funds for the, uh, do you want to tell me about those? Well, we do a baby bottle initiative at the parish. Um, okay. Yeah. I noticed that yeah. you guys are doing that. What's the name of that? Yeah. What's that called? That is the Jim Wagner baby bottle. Is it? Fund. Yes, it is. Um, he started it. Another, another thing that when you think of it, the name Jim Wagner rolls off your lips. Nice. He started it. Um, we are fortunate enough that we have a very, very generous parish and it helps considerably. So we do that. Uh, we do so many other things. Uh, and again, you know, we don't charge, nothing is charged. Everything is donation. Do it by donation. What you can give, when you can give, if you can give. That's it. And it's the same thing that we do, you know, that we, we tell our brothers, you know, when they join. You know, it's, there's no max, there's no min of what we, what we demand of anyone. Um, family first. Always family first. Um, but the charity and the, and the participation is when, where, if. Give what you can. Yes. And, and charity isn't just monetary. Charity is time. Charity time. is love. Charity is listening. Listen. Just listen to someone. Give them the, give them the opportunity to unburden themselves of, of something that's bothering them. All right. So you hear that, folks? We're, there's no extremism happening here. Nope. None at all. No. This is completely devoid of all that. Yep. Right. right. And everybody gets gets along, gets together, and it's all about helping each other. That's it. Let me do the Fulton Sheen of the day, and then we're going to do the prayer of the day. This is the, the wisdom of Fulton Sheen. Wisdom! It's of Charlie Sheen. That's all I will. I have one speed. I have one here. Dover no. Lynch. You can never be commanded, for example, to like pickles. You know how face we are. Outstanding. I'm too smart. I love the my brain. That's epic. Okay. Um, <laughs> so to, we're, we're recording this on March 11th. So I'll just do the wisdom of Fulton Sheen for March 11th. To those who rejected him, righteousness would one day appear as a temple, terrible justice. To the sinful men who accepted him and ailed themselves to his life, righteousness would show itself as mercy. Anybody get that? To those who rejected him, righteousness would one day appear as a terrible justice. To the sinful men who accepted him and allied themselves to his life, righteousness would show itself as mercy. Fulton Sheen. Makes sense. Yeah. He's a man. I love Fulton Sheen. Um, Let's do the prayer of the day. Where is it? Right here. Enzo.com. It's time for the Catholic Prayer of the Day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite, And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. Oh, stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the credo. Outstanding. Pow! All jokes. It's not, it's, it's not uh, sacrilege. It's sarcasm. Or... Right? I have no knowledge of sarcasm. <laughs> None. <laughs> I don't know where that comes in. So let's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll say our prayer. I mean, I always say like, sometimes I'll say a pre-prayer. That's our intercessory prayer. That's a prayer, right? To somebody to pray for us. Yes. If you believe that the soul doesn't die, you could talk to your friend who's alive. You could say, can you pray for me? Or you could say, hey, you're definitely in heaven. You're a saint. We know you're a saint, right? You're in heaven. Can you please pray for me? Please pray for us. Talk to the big guy for us. And we would say that for Blessed Father McGivney, pray for us, right? And let's do our real prayer, not our pre-prayer. Nomine Patre said, Fili et Spiritus Sancti. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting us podcast. Appreciate you today allowing um, me to podcast with these gentlemen, these Knights of Columbus, these admirable, righteous men. Fulton Sheen says it, these... These guys, even if they were sinners, I know they're righteous now and what they do with their charity. I'll let them keep, you know, doing that charity and helping their communities. Lord, we just pray for all the people that are struggling with abortion, that they, uh, you know, take a look at that ultrasound and they make the right decision to save that baby, that life that lives within them. Help all the godless people, all the godless swine throughout this world, This either this fat, flat, world with a firmament on top or globe i don't particularly care the shape of it but all the people herein please 
you know, help us all to convert over to your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Nomini Patris, Ophelius, Virtus Santi, and... That's it. The podcast is ended. You guys can go in peace and love and serve the Lord and be outstanding to each other. Outstanding. Pow. All right. Thank you so much, guys. That was awesome. I appreciate you. All right. You're off the hook. You guys can go enjoy your Saturdays. Thank you, gentlemen. How was it good? You like it? Yeah, they can still good. hear you talking right now, <laughs> just so you know, while the while the music's Go going off. But it's good, right? Yeah, it was. It was awesome. So yeah. push this out a little bit, right? And yeah. Share this with uh, no some knights. Mm-hmm. Get the word out about the... Uh, remember, to what degree are you willing to go to for another? That's the subtitle of the show. To what degree are you willing to go to for another? Join your local Knights of Columbus chapter and do something good for the community. If you guys want to subscribe, I'm sorry, but I can't really subscribe right now. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even tell you. Yeah, we're, we're not going to talk about that. We're talking about all good positive stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, let me do the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all his evil spirits, and prowl around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And also, I want to say really fast, the prayer for the canonization of Michael, blessed Michael McGibby. God, our Father, protector of the poor, defender of the widow and orphan. You called your priest, blessed Michael McGivney, to be an apostle of Christian family life and to lead the young to the generous service of their neighbor. Through the example of his life and virtue, may we follow your son, Jesus Christ, more closely, fulfilling his commandment of charity and building up his body, which is the church. Let the inspiration of your servant prompt us to greater confidence in your love so that we may continue his work of caring for the needy and the outcast. We humbly ask for you. Glorify blessed Michael McGivney on earth according to the design of your holy will. Through his intercession, grant the favor I now present. Please let lapse of life be a tremendous success. Through Christ our Lord, amen. In nomine Patri, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, amen. See you guys. Peace out.